Previously, we implemented tool calling in our API route handler. When someone asks about the weather, the AI recognizes it needs a tool, calls it with the right parameters, gets the result, and forms a natural response. It all works perfectly, but there's something missing from the user experience. Right now, tool calls happen completely behind the scenes. The user asks about the weather and gets an answer, but they have no idea that the AI is actually calling a function to get that information. It might seem like the AI just knows the weather when in reality, it's actively fetching it. In this lesson, we'll make tool calls visible in the UI. This transparency helps users understand what's happening and builds trust. They will see when the AI is calling tools, what parameters it's using, and what results it gets back. Let's dive in. Before we update the UI, let's first understand how tool calls appear in messages. In route.ts, command click the UI message type to view the type definition. Scroll down to the parts array, which is an array of UI message part. When the AI calls a tool, it creates special message parts of type tool UI part. A tool UI part is an object that has a type that starts with tool hyphen followed by the name of the tool. In our case, tool hyphen get weather. Each tool also has a tool call ID, but more importantly, it has a state property that tells us what stage the tool call is in. There are four possible states we need to handle. Input streaming, which is when the tool call is being streamed in and we are receiving the parameters gradually. Input available, which is when the complete tool call with all parameters is ready. Output available, which is when the tool has executed and returned a result. And finally, output error, which is when something went wrong during tool execution. In the UI, we just need to handle this part type in the switch statement, taking into account the different states. So open page.tsx file. The first step is to import the chat message type from our route handler to get proper TypeScript support for our tool parts. So at the top of the file, import type chat message from app slash API slash tools slash route. This gives us full type safety for our tools. Update the use chat hook to use this type. So use chat and we specify chat message. TypeScript now knows exactly what tool parts can appear in our messages. Let's update the message rendering to handle tool parts. So find the switch statement where we render message parts. And you can see currently it only handles text parts. If part.type is equal to text, we render part.text, which is the content itself. Now, after the text case, let's handle a case for our weather tool. So case, if you remember, it is tool followed by the tool name. And you can see TypeScript IntelliSense working. Tool hyphen get weather. We'll add default return null. We start simple, just catching the tool part. But returning null means we won't see anything. So let's check which state the tool is in. And for that, we need another switch statement. So within the case tool get weather, switch statement. And this is on part dot state. Remember, the state can be one of four different values. Now, as a default case, we're going to return null. And now, let's handle the four states one by one. The first state is input streaming. So case, input hyphen streaming. This happens when the tool call is being streamed in piece by piece. Let's add the case. We add a return statement with a div tag. We set key prop message.id followed by the tool name, which is get weather, followed by index. We will add a nested div tag, receiving weather request. Let's add some tailwind styling to make it stand out. So on the outer div, as well as the inner div. We are basically showing a subtle message that we are receiving the request. Actually, during streaming, we can even show the partial parameters as they come in. So let's add that just for development purposes. A div tag. JSON.stringify part.input null command two. We use a pre tag to show the raw input parameters as they come in. This handles our case for input streaming. Next is input available. So case 
input available. The state means we have the complete tool call with all parameters. To save some time, I'm going to paste the JSX. So we have a return statement, a div tag with a key prop and tailwind classes, an inner div that says getting weather for hard.input.city. We can now access city because the parameters are complete. If we go back to our tool call, you can see city is an input parameter. So part.input.city. We show exactly which city we are checking the weather for. The third state is output available. So case, output available. This state indicates the tool has executed and returned a result. Once again, I'm going to paste the JSX. So for case output available, we have a div tag with a key prop and tailwind classes, and then a div tag that now renders the text weather, followed by another div tag that renders par.output. We display the weather data that came back from our tool. Output is how you access the result. Finally, let's handle the error state. So case, output error, and this is for scenarios where the tool call fails. So we should surface that to the user very clearly. We're going to have a return statement with a div tag, key prop, class name for styling, and we use red text to indicate an error and show the error message. It is accessible at par.error text. This helps with debugging and lets users know when something goes wrong. And I can remove this unwanted return null. As you can see, each state has its own visual representation and users can now see the entire flow of a tool call. Let's test this out. Back in the browser, refresh and ask, what's the weather in Metropolis? You might briefly see receiving weather request as the tool call streams in, and then you will see getting weather for Metropolis when the parameters are ready. Next, the weather data appears showing the output. And finally, the AI's natural language response appears below the tool call UI. Since we render the tool call state UI in a switch statement, we only see one of the states at a time. And given how fast the tool call is, it's hard to see all the different states. So just for our learning, I'm going to tweak the code a bit to show all the states at once. I'm going to replace the entire messages rendering. In the browser, you should now see the complete journey. The AI decides to call a tool. It prepares the parameters. The tool executes with the input, so Metropolis. The tool executes and returns data, and the AI uses the data to respond. This transparency is powerful. Users understand that the AI isn't making things up. It's actually checking a weather service, even though ours is hard-coded for now. Now to test the error state, you could modify the execute function in your route handler to throw an error for a specific city. So if city is equal to error city, throw a new error, weather service unavailable. Back in the browser, ask the AI, what's the weather in error city? And you will see the error state rendered in red. State output error, weather service unavailable. You can even see the AI's response. I tried to fetch the weather for error city, but the weather service returned weather service unavailable. Would you like me to try again, check a different city, etc.? We have basically transformed our tool calling implementation from an invisible background process to a transparent visual experience. By handling all four states of tool execution, we give users complete visibility into what the AI is doing. To summarize, we started by importing the proper chat message type to get TypeScript support for our tool parts. Then we added cases to handle each state of tool execution, streaming input, complete input, successful output, and errors. The pattern we have established here works for any tool. Whether you're calling weather APIs, querying databases, or sending emails, you can use the same approach to make tool calls visible and understandable.